How to play the guitar, finger picking style or finger style, lesson 6. Today we'll be playing a tune using the finger picking pattern primary, index, middle, annular, middle, index. And the tune we'll be learning is Everybody Hurts by REM. You'll almost undoubtedly need the ebook or at least look at the ebook to follow along with this or to practice it later. And you'll find that at ebooksforguitar.com and you're looking for month nine, week four. And they are free to view online. Looking at the entire tune, you'll notice it's made of five distinct sections. So we'll learn each of these sections individually and then you can apply the arrangement at the end. The arrangement is the order the different parts of the tune are put in when you play it through. So it's worth studying the arrangement and actually studying arrangements of other songs. So if you decide you want to get into writing music later, you'll have a good idea of how to arrange the songs. Right, to get started, let's do a warm up exercise using this finger picking pattern of primary, index, middle, annular, middle, index and if we just do that over and over again a few times with no chord just so we can get the finger picking pattern smooth and quite natural. Here's that finger picking pattern being played at 140 beats per minute. I'll play it eight times. Notice that these exercises will be played with a six beat bar so we'll count two lots of six before each exercise. If you have to practice that finger picking pattern, pause the video at this point and go off and practice for a while and then return to the video. Once you're fairly comfortable with that finger picking pattern, let's look at the main two chords and they are D major and G major. Let's try going between those two chords with six beats between them. Here it is done with a metronome at 140 beats per minute. If you've been following this course, you'll be aware by now that there's two ways of fingering the G major chord. There's one where you play with the first, second and third finger, and the alternative way where you play with the second, third and fourth finger. If you've not yet tried both ways of playing the G chord, it would be worth trying going between the D and the G a few times with both styles and see which one better suits you, and then try the exercise one more time. Here's the exercise played again, four times with the first, second and third finger and four times with the second, third and fourth finger. Right, 
let's bring the finger picking together with the two chords. But notice that the D has the root on the D string and the G has the root on the bottom E string. So the primary finger will have to move between the two different bases. Also notice that here we'll play each chord twice so it fits in with what we'll be doing in the tune. Let's hear that played a few times with the metronome beat at 140 beats per minute. By practicing these exercises, you've actually learnt most of the tune in one go. The introduction is literally just D, G, D, G, finger picked, and then most of the verse is the same thing. So firstly, let's have a look at the intro, where we just play the D and G twice. Here's the intro at 140 beats per minute. If you can, play along with it. Remember, there'll be 12 beats before it starts, or two lots of six. Right, let's take a look at the verse, where you literally play the D and G three times, and then once more with a slight change. So let's hear that done first with a metronome beat at 140 beats per minute. As we've already looked at going between the D and the G with the finger picking pattern, the only part of that we need to look at is the very last bar. So let's have a quick look at that now. And again. The first half of the last bar is nothing you haven't already done. It's just a G major with the primary index middle annular middle index finger picking pattern. However, the second half, with not playing a chord, they're single notes, and we're using a primary index middle primary index middle pattern. So let's see and hear that done. I'll show you first without the metronome so I can demonstrate it very slowly. Let's see and hear that again. Something it's worth bearing in mind at this point 
is the fact that this movement always goes to an E minor, which you can either play with the chord or just with the open strings if you prefer, but it should sound like this. Another point it's important for me to mention is the fact that the fingering of this passage depends completely on how you finger the G major because you're coming away from the G major when you're playing it. Practice this a few times until you get reasonably comfortable with it and then try it with a metronome beat. Here that passage is at 140 beats per minute. And again. Once you've got used to this little passage of music, you've actually got the part that joins the verse onto the chorus. So now let's learn the chorus. The chorus, like the verse, just consists of two chords. This time it's the E minor and the A major. To make sure we can get a good change between those two chords, let's just practice strumming them for a moment. So if we try going between E minor, A major, E minor, A major, with six beats between them, I'll do the change four times. Even though in that demonstration I was fretting the E minor, when finger picking you don't really have to fret any notes at all, as you don't actually play any of the fretted notes. So the E minor to the A major finger picking should be quite easy. And that's literally the only chords the chorus is made up of. But there's one slight complication. If you look at the end of the line, we have to do a bass line walk from the third fret to the second fret and then the open string as you return to the E minor. And these three notes should be played with the primary finger. I'll play that little passage for you now three times to give you a good idea what you're trying to achieve. <laughs> I'll play that again four times, but with a metronome. However, don't worry if you can't follow it. It's actually, I think, more difficult to play just that passage on its own than it is to play it in context with the song. However, it is a good idea to try it a few times without the metronome before trying to put it into the song and trying it with the metronome. Right, let's bring all those pieces of the chorus together now so you can hear it in one piece and in context and then you'll have a better idea how it should sound. Here it is with a metronome beat at 140 beats per minute. Let's see and hear that again, 
and if you think you can, try playing along. Hopefully you noticed the first line of the chorus was repeated, but if not, obviously play this when you play along. Once you feel you've got that all right, it's worth trying to join the verse and the chorus together and try practicing that a few times before moving on. Here's the verse and chorus play together. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, play along with it. Once you've got the intro verse and chorus, you can move on to the second verse, which doesn't really take much looking at at all. It's basically identical to the first verse, except where you repeat the first line three times for the first verse, you repeat it five times for the second verse. So you've pretty much got that straight away, it's just a case of keeping count of your repeats. Right, let's move on then to the bridge which is the final part of the tune we have to learn. The first line of the bridge we've already covered when we were looking at the chorus. It's even got the step down in the bass line, and the first line just repeats once. However, there's a slight difference in the last bar of the second line, in that you just miss the last two notes. Right, let's listen to the first two lines of the bridge.
might see and hear that again, and if you can, play along with it. Right, let's move on to the next line of the bridge. You'll notice this one also repeats three times. However, at this point in the song, the style changes quite completely. You'll notice from here to the end of the bridge, you're strumming the chords. And we'll be using fifth chords or power chords. And the great thing about these is the pattern remains the same for all of the chords. The only difference you'll come across is where the root is. So some of these chords are played on the bottom three strings and some are played from the A string onwards. Now there's two ways of playing these power chords. You either use the first, third and fourth finger or you can use just the first and third finger. Either way, if you find your first finger is dragging across the strings or covering other strings, it really doesn't matter because you only need to play those three strings. And the same thing applies if you're playing with the first and third and you find the third finger drags across the other strings. It really doesn't matter. So here's what the F sharp five should sound like. I'll play the individual notes so you can hear they're being played and what they should sound like. And once you've heard it, you have a try at playing it. Now, to change between the F sharp 5 chord and the B5, we literally just move the whole chord over a string. So, here's what it sounds like going between the F sharp and the B. I'll do it four times. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, try playing along. If you need time to practice these chords, don't worry. They do take a little more time to practice and get used to if you've never played them before. However, once you've got them, you've got them and they'll be with you for the rest of your life. And once you feel you can play those two chords, let's play the rest of the bridge. Here's the second line of the bridge repeated three times as it does in the song. So you can better see and understand the rhythm, I'll break these two bars down into four with counts of six, and then you can see more clearly how it should be played.
last two lines of the bridge are using the same type of chords as you've just used. However, notice again that some of them are the bottom three strings and some of them are played from the A string upwards. As long as you pay attention to that, you should be okay playing these. They're fairly simple. So here's what it should sound like. Let's see and hear that again, and this time I'll mark it out into sixes so that it's easier to follow the rhythm. Once you're comfortable playing all the individual parts of the bridge, we can bring it all together and play it as one piece. Let's hear the complete bridge played with a metronome at 140 beats per minute. Notice that the last chord in this section is cut short. This is called staccato and it's signified by a dot above or below the note. We'll look at this in more detail in another tutorial. Right, let's hear the entire bridge played from start to finish. And if you think you're ready and you want to try it, then try playing along with it. To finish this song off, 
you now need to practice and speed up the component parts you've learnt, those being the intro, the verse, the chorus, verse 2 and the bridge. And once you're happy with the parts, you can bring them together in the order of the arrangement. Note that when playing with the arrangement, you don't leave any gaps between the components, they flow from one part to the other. And you'll notice at the end you've got an intro with a repeat and fade. The phrase repeat and fade is fairly self-explanatory. It literally means just keep repeating the intro while somebody fades it out for you. However, if you're playing alive or on your own, this might not be possible. And in that case, you might want to make up your own ending. To practice this tune, it would be a good idea to practice with the original or with the backing track. That way you'll know if you make any mistakes. And also, it'll be a bit more interesting if you've got a backing to play along with. At the same time as uploading this video, I've uploaded a separate video with two versions of the backing track on. One slow and one at the correct speed. The link will be below in the description. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more, like and subscribe and then you'll be notified when I upload new ones. And thank you for watching.